As far as I've seen, Scratch is often regarded as the worst game engine. Well, for starters, Scratch is not a game engine, it's a programming language. But that's besides the point. It's an easy and accessible way to get into game development. And I myself actually used it once before this. I don't really remember what I made then, but I know that I used it. <laughs> and I did enjoy using it, making something. What I think causes this bad reputation for Scratch is that it is very accessible. And it's not a bad thing that it is, it's a great thing. But the accessibility also makes it a lot easier to share bad games that are made with it and that's all a lot of people see of it i think so i think it's a good idea to see how good scratch can be for someone who has only used it once before and is used to making games with other things a bit back i got recommended a tutorial about how to make a 3d engine in scratch i was very curious so i watched it the video will be down in the description when i did watch it i decided to make a 3d game in scratch to push the limits of what i could do in scratch so that tutorial told me how to make objects in a 3d space and I also added a jump it wasn't in the tutorial but I just wanted to see if I could do it I used the same method as I do in my 2d games because it's not really that much different it's just if you are in the air add a force downwards not interesting Anyway, the controls in the tutorial were pretty bad in my opinion. The controls were W and S to walk back and forwards and A and D to turn the camera. This is really clunky. Clunky? This is really clunky and makes it feel like the player is less in control. So I decided to change that to make it a lot better. I just made the basic WASD controls that you can strafe and walk forwards and stuff. And I used the arrow keys to turn the camera. The controls still had one problem though. The player immediately stops when you're not pressing a movement button. So I changed the movement a lot. From a fixed value to a value that could easily change. So I could reduce the value, which essentially reduces the speed of the player, instead of stopping the player immediately. I did the same thing with the camera movement. Oh well, yeah, that's everything I did with the tutorial. The rest I did on my own completely, so let's get into that. At this point I was getting quite frustrated because Scratch is very slow to use because you need to find every little function you need without being able to search a function like in Unreal Engine. What I tried next was making the player able to look up and down. I was able to make this work from only one direction at a time. So like when the player was standing in front of something and they looked up, it would look totally fine. But if the player was standing on the other side and looked at those same objects, it would look really weird. I tried for about two hours to make this work, but eventually I just gave up and said, I won't need that anyway. At this point, I wasn't 100% sure what the game was going to be. All I knew that it would be a first person game. First I was thinking I would make a 3D platformer because in my experience those are the most easy games to make. Just plopping down objects you can jump on. So I started to try to make one of the most important things in 3D platformers. Or in fact in any game. Collision. <laughs> and wow, that was so annoying. I tried for at least three hours to make it work and just refused to. So I just stopped trying and I decided to make it a really simple FPS game where the goal is to kill an enemy over and over again until you die to get the highest score possible. So I started with making the player able to shoot. And remember, at this point I was getting really tired of Scratch's work speed. It took me about two hours to make the shooting work. After that I made a quick render of an old gun metal I had. You might recognize it if you watched my first videos. And I slapped that into the game. <laughs> that was enough for me for that day. So it didn't work for the rest of the day on the game. And that was the second day of working on it by the way. But I was talking 
talking at the end of that day with someone. And apparently, someone made a level from Portal in Scratch. With working portals and all. You should probably just play it for yourself. Link will be down in the description. Anyway, the next day I set a goal for myself to finish the game. So I started with making the basic navigation for the enemy. How I made it work is that it picks a random location in a limited area and then it moves to that location. I'm not smart enough to actually make a good navigation, but it wasn't too hard to make the navigation, so I just continued with making the enemy able to take damage, die and respawn. Okay, I'll be honest here, the end of making the game was really boring to do, and it wasn't interesting at all so just we'll skip it because why would you want to listen to something really boring if you want to know more about it just look inside of the project on scratch in the end i think the game turned out all right it's pretty good for a 3d game in scratch made by someone who only uses scratch once before as you can see from this video you can do a lot of complex things with scratch and it doesn't take too long to be able to make something complex into an alright game if you have some experience beforehand. By the way, this is from my experience, of course. The link to the game will be in the description. Um, I will also take a look through Scratch to find some good games you can play and I will put those in the description too. Anyway, time for a small surprise announcement. Sort of surprise. <laughs> Most of you probably already watched my videos about my upcoming game, A Strange Hotel. Well, this announcement is related to that. Soon, on the 31st of May, the demo of the game will be released one month before the full release of the game to sort of create hype, I guess? <laughs> I think? I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate if you liked and subscribed. But for now, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Hopefully. Bye.